Finally, we have ferromagnetism. Ferromagnetism is responsible for the macroscopically observable magnetic fields that you're used to. Okay? So what happens in ferromagnetism is that the moments in a material align due to a quantum mechanical effect called the exchange interaction. And I love to explain things deeply and not really just give names and words to things, but not here, okay? It's called the exchange interaction. It's got no mechanical, you know, it's not classical at all. And I'm not saying it's completely mysterious. You can read a little bit about it and you'll get the idea. It's an interaction between the, the orbital and the, uh, the spin angular momentum. But it's very complicated. But what it does mean is that in some materials due to this quantum mechanical property, basically due to the electronic structure, um, that's why all the materials are different. They have different electronic structure in the material. The domains like to align. So this happens largely in iron, which is basically the namesake of the effect, iron and ferrous, uh, cobalt, uh, nickel, and some other elements, some other transition elements. So certain materials like these will have the ability to have a lot of their moments align, have a macroscopic magnetic effect. But that doesn't seem to be exactly right so far because we think back to the demo, it had a permanent magnet. What does that mean, permanent magnet? Well, it must be that this happened. A lot of its uh, moments align, so it had a big moment inside of it. But then I had those little paper clips, and those had iron in them. And when I brought the permanent magnet up to those, they stuck together, which told you it was magnetic. We didn't really explain that in detail, did we? And then I pulled it off, and they stuck together and I pulled it off. But if you've played with a permanent magnet in those little paper clips, you know that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper clip, right? One way it'll stick, other way it'll stick. If the paper clip were really had all of its moments aligned, it would really only stick one way. It'd be like two permanent magnets trying to shove them together. So it seems like there's something going on. The paper clip is made of iron, but it's not doing exactly this. So it is yet even more complicated. If you were to zoom in onto the material of the paper clip or onto the piece of iron, you would see, if you were to zoom in with some uh, glasses that give you magnetic contrast, you would see it's made up of little domains, microscopic domains. Each one has millions of atoms in it, but they're microscopic uh, to us. And within those domains, the magnetic moments align. Like this, but to our macroscopic senses, it all gets averaged out. Okay, so if you just have a piece of iron lying around that's never seen a magnetic field that was cooled from some melted state, it would be something like this. If you looked really close, you could see a line of magnetic moments, but you have to look really close. But what happens is, kind of like in paramagnetism, when you apply a big external B field, you can align, or well, actually, you tend to kind of grow domains. There might still be a couple that aren't aligned, that are very well aligned with the magnetic field, like this. So look in your physics book, there'll be much prettier drawings than I'm making here. But the point is that you apply an external magnetic field and it aligns the domains. And unlike paramagnetism, it'll stay that way. Okay, so it depends on exactly what's in the material, what kind of iron in it, what dopants are in it, is it iron, cobalt, nickel? So some materials you can align with a magnetic and it really stays for a long time. It holds it really well. So that's what a permanent magnet is. Some kinds of materials, some irons and some metals, it'll align pretty well, it'll last for a few minutes, and then it'll go away. Okay, so you may remember this from playing with magnets and paper clips when you were a kid. You could magnetize it, and it would last a while, then eventually it wouldn't be magnetized anymore. It's because that material will align its domains, it just doesn't stay aligned, it goes back to this. So ferromagnetism is not something we really do with, with numbers, um, but that's basically is, that's what's going on. That's why ferromagnetic materials, some of them hold their magnetization, some don't but they can all be magnetized strongly because they all do actually like to align their domains.